Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, so we will continue talking about heat transfer. In particular, um, we will talk about convection as one of the uh, kinds of heat transfer. We have already uh, considered during the previous lecture um, the conductivity. <clears throat> and this is just another way of transferring heat from uh, one um, object to another or from one part of the object to another. Now, let me just tell you from the very beginning that convection is a much more complex process than conduction. And this lecture is about this complexity. I will try to convey this complex com complexity to you. Now, this lecture is part of the course Physics 14 presented in unisor.com. Um, the website contains the course, basically, uh, which is not complete as of right now, uh, but gradually we are trying to put all the lectures, all the components in place. Now, the same website contains Mass 14, which is a prerequisite for this course, which I strongly recommend you to take, um, because obviously I'm using a lot of Mass during this course of Physics. So, uh, and the website, by the way, is uh, completely free. There are no uh, advertising, and you don't even have to sign in if you don't want to. Uh, okay, so let's talk about um, convection in relationship to conductivity or conduction. Now, conduction is mostly... Um, considered for solid objects. So if you have some kind of a solid object where the molecules are relatively fixed in place, the forces between the molecules or whatever else, they keep this solid object solid, which means molecules more or less are in place. However, they do oscillate. So each one of them is oscillating when the heat is applied. And the more heat is applied, the more intense this oscillation is. Now, whenever we are transferring energy from a hot place, let's say this piece is hot and this piece is relatively cold. Now, this oscillation actually forces, it hits, it shakes, if you wish, the uh, neighboring molecules. The neighboring molecules shakes its neighboring molecules, and that's how the heat is transferred. So, in a way, you can consider this to be a microscopic um, transfer of energy from molecule to molecule. Now, the convection is a completely different process. Convection is mostly related to liquids and gases, where the molecules are not really fixed within the same position, uh, may, may be oscillating around this position, but still relatively fixed. Um, in liquids and, uh, and gases, the molecules are relatively free to move around. So instead of this molecule, which is hot, it has a lot of kinetic energy, just shaking a neighbor, it just flies this way. Now, it also flies this way, or this way, or this way, but for instance, if we are heating in a pot the water, now the flame is here, right? So this piece is very hot, and the molecules of the uh, pot, let's say it's a steel pot, so the molecules which are um, in, inside, the steel, uh, in, in inside the steel pot, they are using the convection, uh, using the, 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 the conduction, sorry, they are shaking the immediate neighbors of uh, molecules of water. This is conduction, because this is a steel. But as soon as the first layer, <coughs> the first layer of the molecules of water is heated, then it immediately can go to all the different directions. And in this direction, or going down, it doesn't really move anywhere. But all the way up, it heats up the upper layers, basically forcing the cooler molecules to go down. Now they're heating, and they're going up and all other directions and that's how the whole process is being done and this is what convection actually is so convection is 
the movement of the heat uh, not from the molecule to a molecule but movement of an entire masses of molecules from one place let's say in this case from the bottom of the pot um, to the upper uh, uh, upper layers of this <coughs> of, the, of, of the water so it's a completely different process but nevertheless it's also a type of heat transfer now not only it's a different process it's a much more complicated process now let me go back to conduction now with the conduction we actually derived a relatively simple formula of uh, the Fourier law of heat transformation which basically was something like this as function of so if this is the wall this is the air and this is the room outside air and the room actually is warmer so the heat goes this way and if this is x then the temperature is changing from the room temperature to the outside air temperature but the way how it moves basically the derivative the speed of changing the temperature is basically amount of heat which goes through the unit of time and unit of um, area at the distance at, at, at a, a surface which is on the distance x so that's kind of a understandable and relatively easy now with convection situation is much more difficult because as you see even in the example of this pot which we are um, heating up the water the movement is extremely complex um, now it would be incorrect to say that the theory does not exist um, about this type of uh, process it does exist and it's complex it's so complex that it's outside of the of the scope of this uh, course it's related to differential equations uh, which are called uh, if I'm not mistaken um, convection diffusion differential equations something like this it's relatively complicated issue so we are not talking about this however however for certain practical cases we can really using the same logic as with um, conduction we can use the same logic in the convention in the convection case and come up with a relatively simpler formula which is well kind of approximately uh, reflects the reality of the um, uh, of, of the real life now let's just think about the following uh, for example for example um, you have certain hot temperature here let's say this is the bottom of the pot with water now this is the surface now initially the water has let's say room temperature so this is something like I don't know, 20 degrees Celsius okay now we are heating this up and the temperature becomes well significantly higher let's say I don't know, 100 Celsius so the water is almost boiling basically in this case now I think it is intuitively obvious and well experimentally uh, confirmed that the flow would be faster if the difference between these temperature temperatures is greater now if, if there is no difference in the temperature basically the, the heat will not flow anywhere right now the more different the more different these two temperatures are the faster these molecules will would be moved the the heat the, the hot molecules will be moved faster to the upper uh, layers of the water so the whole convection actually very much depends on the difference between these temperatures right now let me go to um, extreme case now uh, if we are heating the water 
gradually it will reach the boiling point. Now, whenever it reaches the boiling point, the temperature doesn't really go any further. So even if the temperature down is, let's say, 200 of the flame, it's 200 degrees Celsius, for instance, or 400, whatever. The temperature of the water will not be greater than 100 degrees Celsius because the water will start evaporating and the steam will go out, the vapors will go out, but the temper and the excess of heat will go out. So the temperature will remain as 100 completely. The whole thing will be 100. Now, what is with this heat? The heat goes up all the way, right? Because it should go somewhere, and obviously it will evaporate with the steam which takes all the excess energy with itself. But the temperature of the water will remain 100 degrees. Now, so there is some kind of a flow from 400 or for, from 200 degrees to 100. It, it gradually actually changes. Now, again, the temperature will, will basically direct how fast this heat will, uh, will go. So, obviously, the amount of heat which goes through, let's say, unit of uh, area during the unit of time should really be proportional to difference between temperatures of the source of the uh, heat and, let's say, the ultimate destination of where the heat is. Um, probably a better example is when um, we are calculating this amount of heat which we are consuming um, uh, for, for certain purposes. For instance, if you have, let's say, a hot weather outside and you would like to maintain your room at certain temperature, you need air conditioner. And um, how do you calculate how much air conditioner you need, how much power this air conditioner should really produce or how much heat it should actually take out from the room to maintain the room temperature cooler than outside temperature. Or similar example, if you have, let's say, some kind of a hot pipe going through the room and you would like to find out how much um, uh, air conditioner you need to neutralize the heating effect of the of the, this heating pipe uh, to basically maintain the room temperature. So these are two examples which I'm going to right now to address. And that's where I will use this type of a formula. Now this is not equal sign, this is actually proportionality. And obviously there is a proportionality coefficient which definitely depends on what exactly, whether it's a water or, or, or air or something else, basically depends on the subject and its state. Um, and I will talk about this a little bit more in detail. So let's consider these two examples. Now, the first example is you have a room, you have a four meters hot pipe at uh, 100 degrees Celsius, and the room is supposed to be at 25. Celsius. Now the diameter of the pipe is 0 0.2 meters to know the surface, right? So, based on this formula, and I actually put it here that H in this particular case is equal to 40. So H is um, how is it called? It's a um, convection heat transfer coefficient, something like this. Yes, convection heat transfer coefficient, that's what it is. And in this case, for the air, I took 40. Now, this is joules per second per meter square per degree. About, I put Celsius degree or Kelvin degree, doesn't really matter. It's the same, right? Now, joule per second is actually watt, right? So it's watt per meter square and 
12 degree of Celsius. So that's what my um, convection heat transfer coefficient, which is here. So per unit of, now what is a joule per unit of time per second? So this is also per, per second. So what do we have now? Well, first of all, what is my um, heat transfer per unit of area? Well, that's 40 times uh, difference in the temperatures, uh, which is 100 minus 25, which is 75, 40 times 75, which is what? Uh, 300, 3000. Now, 3000 of what? Um, watt per meter square. Now, what's my area? My area of the cylinder pipe is length times um, circumference, which is, if this is the diameter, so I have to multiply it by pi by 0 0.2. And um, I have it as 2.512 square meters. So if I will multiply this by this, now this is um, amount of heat per square meter, which the pipe actually emits and the air takes with itself. And uh, if I will multiply by square meterage, I will have something like um, the total amount of heat per second will be 7536 watt. Now, usually uh, air conditioners are um, uh, specified in BTU, which is some ter British thermal unit per, per hour. So in BTU it will be, I have to divide it by 3.41 uh, and the result would be about 2200 BTU per hour. So this is kind of an air conditioner which I need in this room to neutralize the amount of heat which is produced. So this is the amount of heat which is produced, so this is the amount of heat which I have to extract from the room to maintain the same temperature, right? So this is how this formula basically is used. Now, where did I get this 40? This is a very murky situation, very, very unclear. Because look at it this way. Now, for instance, you have this pipe, which is going through the room. Now, if I don't do anything, and just, just let it basically maintain this inside temperature of 100, and I would like to have room temperature 25 and I put somewhere on the side the air conditioner assuming that they are not far from each other and the air is circulating relatively freely. Now, what if I will put a fan against this pipe? Well, the fan will take more at the same time the, same, the, the, the fan will take more hot air from the, um, from the pipe and which means that I will take more heat from the pipe during the unit of time, which means my air conditioner must be more powerful because more heat will go from the pipe. So this coefficient is very much dependent on, on conditions. Um, again, if there is some kind of a extra movement of the air which is produced by uh, uh, some kind of a force, for instance by, by fan, then it's completely different. It might be from a, a, the range, that's what I want to say, the range of this value, of this coefficient, might be completely different in different conditions. So that's why um, this is basically uh, tabulated uh, for many different cases like forced flow of air, not forced flow of air, uh, force in some particular way, then it depends also on how this particular pipe is arranged. Because if it goes horizontally, 
uh, it's one thing. If it goes vertically, it's another thing. Because if it goes vertically, then the air would dissipate differently than if it goes horizontally. And it also depends on the gravity, obviously. So somewhere up in the mountains, it might be different. So that's why it's very difficult to deal with um, convection. Uh, it's uh, very fluid, I would say. I mean, it depends on so many different circumstances that it's kind of difficult to, to do these type of calculations. So this is very, very approximate. And don't count on this number 40 to be, you know, a reality. Well, it's close to reality um, under certain circumstances. I took it from uh, basically some practical uh, textbooks. However, there is no guarantee that in some particular cases, in some particular pipe, it will be the same. All right? And now my second problem, which I wanted to talk about. This is about um, air conditioning, considering we have a weather, warm weather. So, let's say outside I have 40 degrees Celsius, uh, inside I would like to have 25 degrees Celsius. Now, I have a, let's say for simplicity, I have a glass wall which separates outside from inside. So, if this is my room, so this is my glass window and everything else is insulated. All right? So this is the heat, 40 degrees. And this is what I would like to have inside. So in this particular case, let's assume that the area of this glass wall is 20 square meters. In which case, I have to multiply my 40, um, this is my uh, convection uh, term heating, uh, terminal heating transfer rate, whatever it is. So it's uh, watts per uh, square meter per uh, degree of Celsius, right? I have to multiply it by difference between temperature, which is 40 minus 25. And I have to multiply it by area, right? So this is my wattage. So this is 15 times 20, it's uh, 300, so it's 12,000 uh, watt joules per second, okay? This is amount of heat which I am consuming from the window. And obviously this is amount of uh, heat which I have to extract if I would like to maintain the same temperature um, of, the, of the room. So this is basically how my air conditioner should be uh, calculated. And this is in BTU, it's equal to approximately 3500 BTU BTU per hour which is not very uh, powerful air conditioner so it's no big deal really so this is applications but all these calculations they seem to be like correct calculations but don't forget it all depends on this which is convection heat transfer coefficient, which is very much um, poorly defined, let's put it this way. Uh, for instance, again, if you have a vertical glass window, the air dissipates differently than if the source of the heat is horizontal uh, or in some other shape, like a pipe, for instance. And it all depends on, again, whether there is some kind of an extra movement of the air inside extra circulation etc however convection is extremely important obviously for instance the weather depends on the convection of air the ocean currents 
basically are results of convection because they're usually going from warmer to, to colder area. So convection is extremely important and extremely often uh, occurs in nature. Um, but all I'm saying is you really have to approach all these calculations related to convection very carefully and primarily because of this coefficient of uh, heat transfer in the convection. It's very much difficult. It's very difficult to, to calculate and to basically tabulate because there are some tables where are saying, okay, under these conditions the um, uh, convection uh, heat transfer coefficient is such and such. Now, liquids obviously have one coefficient, uh, gases another coefficient, different liquids have different coefficients. It all depends on density, on viscosity of many, many, many different factors. And that's what really complicates the whole issue. Plus, another very important thing is, um, and that's very important actually in liquids, what if you have something like, well, the same pipe, let's say, and you have to really put some kind of a liquid around it to cool it down for whatever reason, okay? Now, it all depends how this liquid behaves, because if it moves, um, it, it's one thing. If it doesn't move, then the um, convection would be different. Now, the movement also is different. Uh, sometimes the, the movement is along a straight line. If it's a liquid, for instance, you go, it goes in a straight line like one flow with a, with a river, like a river. But, uh, however, there might be a turbulent uh, movement when the water moves something like this. With gases, actually, it's more complex even than that. So, these are very complex areas for exact calculations. However, my purpose was to give you basically a feeling how the convection actually occurs, what problems, what difficulties are, and um, under, certain, under certain circumstances we can actually do the calculations, maybe approximately, but still we can do the calculations of the heat transfer. And again, this is just one of the examples of the heat transfer, along with um, conduction. And uh, the next uh, lecture would be about the third type of heat transfer called radiation, which is completely unrelated to these, because these are kind of mechanical uh, movements of the molecules. In case of radiation, it's completely different, so we'll talk about this next time. It's electromagnetic fields, etc. Okay, I do recommend you to go to the website, take a look at the text which is uh, accompanying this uh, lecture. Um, it's uh, very useful and uh, again I do suggest you to take the whole course, not just one particular lecture, on the unisor.com. Other than that, that's it. Thank you very much for today and good luck.